All right, so uh, I've been promising you a reading uh, from, from the book, The Internet is Infected. Uh, obviously, I'm completely censored, and uh, let me just give you a quick background story. Was uh, I had, uh, I want to say it was about 87,000 followers on Parler before it got taken down in 2000. Uh, if, you, if you don't understand, if you have a product and you're going to market it, you have to be able to wait to, to, to market it. And I couldn't afford at the time, you know, uh, to, to pay for advertising on YouTube or, or especially in the mainstream media or anything. I mean, that costs a hell of a lot of money. And, uh, you know, when you're just a little fish and all you've done is self-published a book, you know, you, you just can't do it. So what you can do is develop your social media, whether it's on TikTok or Instagram or whatever. I mean, right now I've got, I don't know, 750 followers on X. Uh, now, that's not enough to, to market a product and make money. And, uh, and so my problem has always been even, well, now I'm going to offer the book for free. And so, you know, sometimes you might get picked up by a big fish. Now, I'm going to give you the quick story. I, our country, our choice, I volunteered for the organization. I told them that I could help them with the cybersecurity. I went down, I interviewed with Colonel Douglas McGregor. We made a video. I thought that video was going to drop about uh, well, they told me it'd take about two, two and a half weeks to drop the video. That's been, it's all been almost a month and a half now. They're not going to drop the video. I think the probably the three letter agencies are leading on them uh, because they don't want that cybersecurity guy out there. And I can tell you that right now. I am the Edward Snowden of uh, the United States. And, uh, and so, but I've been promising you that I'll get the book to you. So what I've decided to do because I just finished up. I, I had a huge, huge, and, and this is something I want you to think about, is I had a huge, I've got a house, you know, in an HOA, and the HOA is on my butt all the time, and of course, I've got a crippled body with my back, you know, and, and I won't give you all my medical problems, but I mean, for me to work on the house, I mean, sometimes I can only get a good three, four, five hours of work in, and so I moved eight tons of rock one direction, and eight tons of rock back another direction, put down a barrier, and I uh, took out uh, four trees, uh, you know, got multiple bushes. I mean, it's been a hell of a damn journey since I broke my neck back in uh, July or May of 2022. And, uh, and so I have really haven't had time to work on uh, getting you the, 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 that cybersecurity guy information. So we're going to do a reading uh, from the book. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of give you the story because I thought that was my big chance. If you get a big fish and I thought that... I gave them the book for free. I thought they were going to post it on Our Country, Our Choice, the website. And uh, they got 250,000 people that uh, are members now. And I said, well, this is going to be great. And, uh, and I, I, just, I just want the information out to the American public. So uh, anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my website up again. Uh, it's going to take me a good month, month, month or two. Now that I'm finished, like, the, the moral of the story is the big projects are done. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm done working on the house. I'm done blowing leaves. I'm done getting up on the house, uh, blowing out the gutters. I'm done detailing the car. You know, I'm done moving eight tons of rock. You know, I, the gutters are clean. All the, all the HOA liens on my house have been uh, gone. Uh, my finances are done after the divorce. So now I got some time and I'll put the website up. It's going to be thatcybersecurityguide.com, thatcybersecurityguide.com. And I'll get it up within about the next month or month and a half, and the book will be free there. Unfortunately, nobody watches me on uh, on YouTube or, or Rumble, but uh, that's okay, and uh, or even on uh, uh, X where I've got 700 followers. But let's uh, let's get into the first reading. And uh, the only reason I'm doing this was I was listening to the radio, and they were talking about the fact that people are falling for the, the simplest of scams. I mean. You have to understand, this is just the introduction of my book. <laughs> when you consider, there's, there's, there's 1,100 pages here. And, and, and so what I did was I gave you in-depth, uh, uh, you know, lines of defense uh, on how to use the infected Internet. So this, this, this was my frustration, uh, if you can imagine, because, you know, as I sent out 100 copies of the book for people to read, uh, give me a review. I never got a review. And then I would listen to people on the radio and they would come in and this is the shit that they, the garbage that they would uh, dictate. And I would just be like, I can't believe that these 
people are promoting themselves as cybersecurity experts. This is just a few pages of my book, and I, I do it as a joke. So let's just let's just do a reading here. So uh, I'm just going to get into it. So let's quickly make fun of these well-dressed, polished commentators that regurgitate the deficient, lack of direction, cybersecurity action items that we hear over and over again, uh, reiterated by our media. For-profit talk radio, NPR, yep, yeah, uh, for-profit corporations and the secretive spying governments and bring you what I'm presenting later in the book. The man, well, of course, the man by I'm referring to corporations and the government uh, mostly, Eh, hackers and everybody else, does not seem to want or does not consider you capable of moving beyond these minor tidbits. And by, that's what I consider these. These are just tidbits. But it seems like on the radio that people really need these tidbits. So that's why I'm reading you this first. And we'll get into more in-depth discussions uh, in later videos. Uh, these tidbits of information you are often fed as you read this section of the book. Think about how many times you have seen and heard these facts retold as if your media and these polished spokespeople were giving you important information. This will all start to ring a bell in your head as you realize that how little material you're really given from media sources that have little information or are suppressed and controlled. And, and the, my whole point by making fun of all this was like, this is just scratches the surface. And they bring in these commentators and they present them like, oh, he's a cybersecurity expert. They're the biggest flipping idiots I've ever heard on the radio. And I'm thinking, my God, if, if this is an expert, I mean, I guess I must be like Einstein, right? I, you know, or I'm Oppenheimer. I don't know. I, you know, you tell me. So a free and independent media is becoming a big forgotten paradigm in today's world. Once you have scanned these very basic precautions to using the infected internet that you constantly hear about, you can move on to, uh, to the core of this book, which is my in-depth tutorials for securing your small business uh, and home computing uh, network, computers and mobile devices. So let's, uh, let's just read through it, man. And I, you know, I, I just, I can't believe that, uh, that, that these guys get away with giving this advice like they're experts, and I guess they make a ton of money. But let's just go through it. Use anti-software. Install and regularly update your anti-malware software and definitions. Run your anti-software often. Never install more than one antivirus project product on your device or computer. If you believe you have a virus and your anti-software, by the way, if you didn't understand, anti-software is, is a, 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 a reaction, okay? So basically the threat is already out on the internet and it might, it could have been out for a year, okay, before it got discovered. That means it existed for a year on your computer. And then eventually these, these uh, any software like Microsoft Defender or uh, whatever antivirus software, Norton antivirus, I mean, so they're reactionary. They're reacting to, to the threats that are on the internet and, and it might take them a year to discover them. But that doesn't mean that it's, it's a proactive solution. I teach you proactive solutions in the book. Well, let's keep going. If you believe that you're, you have a virus and your anti-software is not up to the task of wiping it out, you can go to other antivirus vent vendors and create a bootable CD or USB drive to scan your computer with the free software. And by the way, my book teaches you how to create that CD or how to create the USB drive. And sometimes, you know, you might want to try some different antivirus virus software because they don't all have the same malware databases, although they're pretty in sync. Uh, let's just keep going. Scanning for malware as a security tactic is a reactive approach to security. And this book is about being proactive. Signature-based anti-software is the most common method used by to identify viruses and other malware. However, it is estimated that this technique is incapable of detecting as much as 20% of the malware that exists on the internet today. That was back in uh, 2016. Can you imagine? Probably about 40% today. So uh, signature-based antivirus software co compares the contents of a file to a directory of known virus signatures. A, a signature is, uh, okay, basically all files are made up of bytes or sequences of bytes. 
And so what they can do is they can say, okay, you know, 3.5, no, 6B, you know, blah, 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 because it's all in hex, okay? If you ever have written assembly language, and so what it does is it looks for that signature in the file, and that's all it does. It's still very simplistic. Uh, this signature-based antivirus uh, compares the contents of the files to a directory of known virus signatures. Any software developers are working hard to combine a heuristic approach, uh, meaning a method with which to detect an unknown virus before it can do harm, but the technology is in its infancy, and by the way, it never came to fruition, and is imprecise. For example, in an IDG News Service article by Locke Essers titled, and by the way, I, I, I give you all kinds of sources, and uh, and so, it, you know, it says uh, malware operated uh, behind Finnish government networks for two or three years. This is what I was talking about. This malware operated between Finnish government networks for two or three years before being discovered. In military terms, we know the enemy is up to no good and we are taking measures to counter the offensive. But how to eradicate it before the enemy can implement their plan takes time, knowledge, and study. And then, of course, I cite various sources. And uh, so, and then I, I get, I always, you know, in my book, and by the way, I can't wait for you to get a copy of the book if you're watching this video. If you think you're safe using any software, think again. We have to fear logic bombs. Because this type of malicious software may target a specific computer, it's undetectable by any software. This malware is often triggered by an event such as a date or a message from its programmer, a file or a home directory being detect deleted, and so on. It can even be triggered by a non-event such as its creator has not logged in for the past month. This could be created by an employee who knew they were going to be on the chopping block as a form of retribution. By the way, I worked at a corporation, and uh, one of the employees, uh, she put in a logic bomb, and because uh, they, they, they eliminated her. She was very vindictive, man. I mean, I'm telling you. And she wiped. <laughs> she wiped a number of the disc. I don't know if she ever went to jail. She probably should have. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, and then they, they I, I'm not sure if they were able to recover everything from the backups, but I'm just telling you, there's also what is known as a zero day vulnerability for which no software fixes are available as the veterans of foreign wars website found out an attack believed to be initiated in China may have been trying to spy on U.S. military members. According to the PC World Ar article by Jeremy Kirk titled attack on U.S. veterans website may have been uh, aimed at military members, he states, the attackers compromised the VFW's website and placed a hidden iframe on the site. That, By the way, an iframe is, is, is within like a web page, okay, just, just so you know. Uh, and, and so every time you visit a web page, you could be kicking off malware. And this, these are the threats that you face on the internet. Now let's keep going. It was delivered. Uh, FireEye wrote in a blog post, if successful, the attack deposits a backdoor called ZX Shell, which can steal files from a user's computer. Since the VFW has 1.4 million members, and by the way, I, I mean, since then, good God, think about it. Uh, Experian's been hacked. Everybody's been hacked. I mean, it, you have to understand that these computer professionals that are out there, they're idiots. They, they don't compare to that cybersecurity guy. I'm going to tell you that right now. But let's, uh, let's keep, and that's why I'm, I'm, I'm censored beyond belief. Nobody can find that cybersecurity guy. But let's keep going, which includes 75,000 on active duty, and so many former and current military internet devices could have been compromised. The attack was found by a company, FireEye, which scans the internet for new attacks. Since zero-day attacks exploit unknown vulnerabilities, these attack vectors exist for an average of 10 months. 10 months, can you imagine? According to one estimate on Wiki. Because well, I'm back. This was back when Wiki was somewhat reliable. I know now, you know, it's just a left-wing platform, and they they put all kinds of false stuff up there. But it, back then, it was a pretty good source. Because these attacks are unknown to any software, victims have no indication of their internet devices have been compromised. And then, of course, I cite various resources that I that I sourced that from. All right, so we're we're only going to get. <laughs> God, we're not even going to get through three or four pages of the book. So um, use a software firewall. A software firewall is a set of related programs that prevents outsiders from accessing data on your private network.
Install and maintain firewalls between your internet network and the internet. Install firewalls on all devices that communicate with the internet. Chapter 2 of this book will show you how to set up and secure a hardware firewall for your network, cabled and Wi-Fi properly. Chapter 9 will briefly go over setting up some software firewall rules on how to communicate securely uh, behind your firewall. So, yeah, I teach you how to do all of that. Uh, number three, keep software up to date and download and install software updates for your operating system. By the way, I mean, can you imagine so many people were still running, oh, there are probably people, people still out there running XP. <laughs> oh my God, the most insecure operating system on the planet. The most hacked operating system. I mean, Microsoft is the most hacked operating system on the planet. If you, if you really want to be secure, run Linux, but let's just keep going. Uh, Every month in periodicals that I read, there are articles about new methods that crackers are using to attack your internet devices and how software vendors and open source software community are countering them. According to 60 Minutes, one in four, one in four American households owning an internet device have malware-related problems. According to the May 23, 2012 PC World article, Malware Threat Level Hits Four-Year High by John P. Mello, Jr., and then, of course, I cite the source. In the first three months of the year, malware circulated in cyberspace reached a four-year high and is on a pace to reach 100 million samples by year's end. McGaffey, which is another antivirus software that you can get, uh, and if you, if you notice that every time you install like freeware like CCleaner or something, it always says, would you like to install a free copy of McGaffey? By God, don't. If you've already got antivirus software, don't install, <laughs> install another version of antivirus software. But all right, so so we have already detected eight million new malware symbols showing the authors unrelated development of new malware. Vincent v V4, senior vice president of McGaffey Labs, said in a statement, the same skills and techniques that were sharpened on the PC platform are increasingly being extended to other platforms such as mobile and Mac. By the way, your phone's infected. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> You've been hacked. You know, all your contacts, all your private information, all your text messages. Believe me, there are people everywhere that have all that information. Because your, 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 your phone is just a freaking virus-ridden platform that exists for uh, the government and corporations and everybody else to exploit. Regularly change passwords and protect them. Never use the same password for multiple sites. I can't imagine. People are still doing that. Keypass.info. Let me give you the website. Keypass.info. Download it. You can set up your own encrypted password database on your computer. The guy offers it for free. I encourage you to give him a donation. He keeps it updated on a regular basis. It's what I use. It's an encrypted database. I mean, even if even if the FBI gets a hold of your computer, they're going to have a hard time getting to all your passwords. But it's you've got to be able to maintain a separate password for every website. I mean, that's how hackers really tear into people. Because what a lot of people do is they use the same password for the, the multiple websites. Because, you know, my dog thus and such, that's their password, and they use the same one. And as soon as the hacker gets it, they go, oh, man, I got, I got their mortgage. I got all their bank accounts. Because they're using the same password everywhere. It's just so stupid, these people. All right, for... Chapter 11 of this book covers this topic in detail to make this easy and manageable for you. Just changing passwords is not enough. All right, so we're going to finish off this video because it's getting a little bit long in the tooth here. This is, uh, by the way, th these are 27 steps. I'm going to, I'm only going to get through like eight. We'll try to get through eight. All right, let's just get through it. I often see use password protected features included in your installed software applications as a recommendation. While a good idea, some of these password-protected documents may still be scanned with software to read some of their content, even though you password protect them. So if you didn't know, you can take a Microsoft Word document. Now, if you're going to send it across the Internet to your friend, which I don't recommend. You know, I teach you on the book how to set up an SSH server, especially if you're a small business, and exchange files securely. But if you really are desperate and you want to send a, a, a document, don't send a fucking excuse my French, a freaking Microsoft Word document unencrypted. You can you can go in and you can say password protect the document. And then if you, you know, unsecurely get on an unsecure line, I, I recommend Signal and call your customer and say, look, I sent you a Word document and here's the password to, to decrypt it. 
So you can actually, I mean, the, you know, the, the companies now, is this a trusted way to go? It's, it's better than not than sending a document without any encryption at all, right? Uh, and the same thing with uh, LibreOffice. You can encrypt your documents to a password. But anyway, so let's keep going. If a password-protected document is emailed, it will bounce from email server to email server where a cracker can make a copy of it. They can spend then spend an infinite amount of time of computer time cracking the password to your document, which is often very weak. Yeah, a lot of people encrypt their document to my dog, <laughs> my wife's name, whatever, you know. And so we will discuss strong pa passwords in Chapter 11. So... So yeah, uh, you know, understand if you even if you send that uh, encrypted document, it, a, a hacker is going to have a, I mean, all encryption given an infinite amount of computing power and an infinite amount of time is 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 crackable. Let's just put it that way. But I mean, are you a person of interest? I mean, are you Dan Bongino? Are you uh, President Trump? I mean, a document that they send, I guarantee you, when it gets on a mail transfer agent. Uh, somebody's going to download that document and they're going to spend a hell of a lot of time trying to break that little password encryption. But you as a common household uh, person, you're probably pretty safe just sending a password encrypted document. I don't think anybody's going to spend a lot of time on it unless you, you know, uh, are, you know, Bernie Madoff or something. All right, so know who you're dealing with. CBS 60 Minutes says that 1 in 100 search links offered by Google will install or attempt to install malware on your Internet device. That search engine click that took you uh, to an ad or offer that looks so good may just be a scam. Just because the web page looks professional and legit does not mean you are dealing with a reputable website. Typing a URL incorrectly often takes you to a malicious or targeted website to attack your internet device. So I, I hope you kind of understand that. So when you when you're doing these these internet searches and stuff, and they're offering up links, and I'm guilty of it. And that's why in my book I teach you about virtual operating systems, because you can you can install an operating system on top of your operating system, and then you can go out and you can click on links till you blow in the face. Who cares if they infect your virtual operating system because it's running on top of your operating system? And if, if, if they crash your virtual operating system, you just delete it. It's just a file on the computer, and then you reinstall it with VirtualBox. I teach you how to do that in the book. All right, so if you're shopping or banking online, only use the sites that use encryption, HTTPS, and this is, well, it's pretty much standard now. You know, back then, everybody was still using HTTP. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And people are still using FTP servers. But let's just keep going. Which will protect your information as it travels over the Internet from your computer uh, to its their server. In addition, make sure once you're logged into a site that every page you visit remains HTTPS encrypted. Back then, when you would go from web page to web page, some of them would be encrypted and some of them wouldn't. It was crazy. I mean, well, you know, everything was developing. That's 2016. In an article in the May 2012 PC World by Tony Billy, watch out for malicious web apps. He points out that a malicious app may be able to access information across tabs within the same browser session. So if you're accessing an HTTPS secure type, don't open up another tab. And but this this and this is a very important. So if you if you're doing banking, you know, and you've got an HTTP page on one one tab, and you're going to open up your banking site on another, they can cross over those tabs and hack you. But right now, I mean, there's not too many HTTP pages out there, so this is kind of a low low thing. So we're going to get number eight, and that'll be it. Many websites offer both unsecured and secured versions of their web page content. When given the choice, always opt for the secured version of the internet content. I will show you how to do this automatically. Well, let's get let's get one more. Let's get number nine. Don't open an attachment <laughs> or blindly click on links in an email, even if you know whom it's from. Many of your friends' and family's computers have been cracked. And criminals are using their email to lure you into installing malware on your computer as well. You will often see an email coming from them, which, by the way, how many times do you get an email? So-and-so has sent me an email from Nigeria. <laughs> and people click on the link. Oh, my God, it just blows my mind. Uh, but anyway, so to websites, they have been cracked. Weeks later, you may get a follow-up. And how many times have you gotten an email from a friend of yours? I think I was hacked and my, my cell phone sent out 
uh, a, a notice to all of my contacts with the link. I hope you didn't click on it. Well, duh. <laughs> Holy shit. You know, that, that's, that's why I'm making fun of all this. This is what the, uh, the cybersecurity experts present. But let's just keep going. Weeks later, you may get a follow-up email from the apologizing to the crack and not click on the link provided, the, which constantly surprises me and how long this activity is allowed to progress without their knowledge. And that's another thing. You'll, you'll sit there and steep... Don't let this uh, this malware exist on their phone for God knows how long, and uh, and it just sends out stuff. So okay, we got through nine of of, of twenty seven or twenty eight. We'll, we'll make another video because I don't want to bore you to the teeth. Uh, I did want to talk about some stuff that might help you. You know, I, I do want you to kind of look around the house. What is the one item that you use the most? This is what I use the most. This is my blower. I've got oak trees all around the house. I'm every day I'm out blowing leaves and so you know what I had to do is I bought I bought four of these batteries and these are off-market batteries this is a rechargeable tools battery 56 volts uh, model uh, 5050 and uh, you can find this on Amazon and I'm going to tell you what it does a lot better than the eco which is the, the blower uh, uh, product uh, these batteries, these are off, these are uh, off off product brand batteries. They do better than the Eco brand batteries, and it's they're about ninety two dollars. But what I'm the moral of the story is is look around. So let's say your lawnmower is the most important thing. You know, make sure that you've got backup uh, parts for your lawnmower and everything. Because I'm going to tell you, I can't do without this blower. Uh, my gutters fill up with with leaves, and that if I leave those leaves in the gutters more than a month, uh, it'll rot my roof out. And then I'm looking at thousands upon thousands of dollars in damage to the house. So, and it also not only that, uh, it'll stain the gutters, and then the HOA's after me because I got stains on my gutters because I left the leaves in the gutters. I'm just saying the gutters; it's all around the house, the driveway, for example. If I leave the leaves on the driveway and the acorns and everything, or if I run over the acorns, it stains the driveway. Then the HOA's after me, saying your driveway looks bad. It's bad for the neighborhood, you know. But anyway, that's uh, that's one thing. The other thing is, uh, you know, I broke my neck. Uh, I found this uh, far infrared heating pad, the OTK uh, heat for pain relief. It's got all of these uh, metal discs in it. Uh, this is really helping my back. Now, it doesn't do as good a job as a massage. I, I highly encourage you uh, to consider massage therapy, especially if you get somebody. Got a neighbor. I mean, hell of a story today. As a matter of fact, I wasn't going to present this. And uh, she had um, her dishwasher went bad. And they came in, and she, she knew she was having a roach problem. She just didn't know how bad it was. And so when they took the dishwasher out, I mean, she said it looked like, uh, it looked like one of those movies, man, where the roaches just came up out of the drain, and they just covered her kitchen. And she freaked out. She ran out of the house. <laughs> she was like, ah! She says, throw away the dishwasher. Burn the house down. Oh, my God. And I told her, I said, well, look. You know, all you got to do, you can buy this. Uh, you can use liquid plumber, although liquid plumber is kind of hard on the drains. Uh, but you, this is called Green Gobbler en Enzymatic Drain and Grease Trap Cleaner. Okay? And uh, you pour this down the drain. Uh, all the drains around your house. It, when I say drain, don't pour it in. Well, you can, you can actually put it in the garbage disposal, but it's not recommended if you've got a two-sink uh, system. And definitely the dishwasher. You want to put it down in the dishwasher drain. Pull the screen out of the bottom of the dishwasher. Put this down all the drains, and it'll eliminate that roach problem that comes up from the, the sewer system. It also eliminates, I get all these uh, little flies that fly around the house. And so I just wanted to give that out as a piece of advice to you. And then the last thing was uh, I developed my own weed killer. Uh, it was, I can't take credit for it. It was a YouTube video. And uh, what you can do is you can go to Amazon. You can order. It's 40% vinegar. You don't want to just use regular cleaning. I mean, you can use cleaning vinegar. or You certainly don't want to use distilled vinegar. That's just cleaning vinegar with more water in it. I mean, you know, people don't understand that. But you can also go to Ace Hardware. They have 30% vinegar. And what you do is you dump that 40% vinegar down in here. You add some salt to it. And then put a little bit of uh, Dawn dishwashing liquid. And I'm going to tell you, you go out and uh, I got a bunch of rock around my house. And man, you spray this on them weeds, they're dead. <laughs> they're dead within a day. You don't need Roundup. Roundup causes cancer, man. 
What the hell are you using Roundup for? Don't use Roundup. Uh, so that's, uh, I guess that's it for the video. Uh, so we got through another two pages of a 1,100 page book. It will be available, I promise you, within a month. And uh, you can download it and read it for yourself. Peace out. Stay free.